Hi, I'm Sarah from Homespun Childhood. I'm a teacher turned homeschool mom of three, and I love all things curriculum, especially reading and literacy. So today I'm going to be chatting about Penwheels, which is a early literacy program by Rooted in Language. And we're gonna go through their uh, year one level one and year one level two and see what is inside. So here we go. So first thing, Penwheels is a digital download curriculum. You can use it as a digital download on your device or you can have it printed. Um, this is a printed version of the educator's guide from year one, level two. Penwheels and Rooted in Language in general is created by uh, for lovely women who are very experienced in um, language and teaching reading and especially working with struggling readers with dyslexia and dysgraphia. They are SLPs, uh, speech language pathologists. They are just a wealth of knowledge. So I highly recommend checking them out. Okay, so when we are starting with pinwheels, the plan and prep and getting started is the first thing you should look at. This is for year one, level one and two. So you have your table of contents. They talk about all the different components that you're going to find. There is a massive video library that is just so much information and is great for anybody teaching reading and early literacy skills, especially you know, a homeschool parent, I think. It provides you with a lot of the background information. And so you get access to all of the videos. We also have some tips for planning and some tips for differentiation, so expanding um, for more practice or for reducing for a student who's moving along a little bit faster. You have the materials list. You have a glossary of terms. Again, this is great for someone who does not have experience in teaching reading to have all of these right here for you. there is a lot to it. We have some terminology and understanding kind of how it all comes together about phonemes and phonology and orthography. And then you move into your reading kits, which I will show you after I go through the educator's guide. So let's put this aside for now. Okay, so here is year one, level one. This is a program intended for a child who is ready to begin reading instruction. Um, so kindergarten age, this is you know appropriate. The, the you know kind of solid five-year-old. This is where you would want to begin if they have no previous literacy instruction. Um, knowing your letters might be a good starting point and some basic phonology with like rhyming and whatnot. Um, but again, this is so in depth that if your kid does not know all of those skills, you know, all the letters yet, or isn't, um, you know, doesn't know letter sounds, this is still a great place to start. So we go into reading and writing in the brain and going through a little bit of the science of reading, which is excellent to have here. And they do such a nice job going through things in language that's accessible to, you know, the parent um, and to somebody who might not be trained in the science of reading and reading instruction. They go through the different aspects of the pinwheel, so phonics, spelling, handwriting, word study, grammar, and then they have games and reading and writing combined. So this is a complete program for literacy. It has everything you need, um, especially for the handwriting and the spelling and the word study and the grammar and the phonics component. I like that it's integrated. It offers a clear path to pulling things together. So we have our teaching principles about metacognition, and then we move into our scope and sequence. So level one, scope and sequence. Each color is another is an aspect of the pinwheel, so phonics is the red, and level one is gonna introduce your short vowel sounds and consonants, B, G, M, P, S, T, and Z, and some sound sibling charts, sound processing, training, multisensory games, and some you know, teaching for the parent. Spelling begins 
with, say, the sounds as you write them, the vowel chart, and continues. Handwriting is tied in to the letters that you are working on with phonics. Word study begins with the um, basic suffixes like making a word plural. Grammar and mechanics is starting with capitalization, punctuation, um, pronoun usage for the word I. So again, this is very developmentally appropriate for a kindergarten level student, you know, five-year-old. This is a chart that just kind of goes over what you're going to get with pinwheels all together. And then they go into how to read their weekly plan. So they have each unit is designed to be, you know, about a week. Um, you can go faster, you can go slower based on your student. Um, I've spoken before about how reading instruction is diagnostic and prescriptive. So we have this scope and sequence and we have all this, all these lessons. If your child has mastered it and it is moving along really quickly, then you're welcome to move the curriculum along with you. If your child is needing more time, then you slow down and you have more time. So individualizing the schedule, they talk here about um, the different learning levels and attention and all those things that we want to kind of be focusing on. They talk a lot about multi-sensory and game practice that they're pulling in. They're pulling in a lot of methodology from um, Orton Gillingham and their experience as speech language pathologists and teaching reading. So we have our foundational skills practice. We have building the sound to letter connection. They have lots of little kind of chants that they use, which is great, you know, if in doubt, sound it out. There are symbols and indicators for the different um, components of pinwheels, and then just some basic terminology for how they are, you know, showing the sounds versus the letters. And they also have throughout the curriculum, they have a little note to access the video. Some general ideas for daily supplies and extra practice. And then we kind of jump right into it. So unit one, all of the units are set up in the same format. So we're gonna just go through a couple. Unit one, we have short vowel sounds. So it tells you the new literacy concepts. And again, each color is a component of the pinwheel and the different components they are teaching. We have unit one lessons based off of the day. We have what you need. We have why you teach, pulling in the science of reading here. I love that they're tying this in for us in everyday you know, language and terminology. I love that they have the yellow call out boxes. These are like the educator notes. And they also have you know, the kind of more direct literacy component. So introducing the short vowels, they have videos for what that looks like, for the practicing, for the vowel chart. They have ideas for bringing this onto the child's level with songs and story. And they talk about starting the LA binder, the language arts binder. Um, this is a great tool that they walk through in all of their programs about building a interactive binder that you use with your student um, to make note of the thinking. Um, this is a second brain for a child. I've talked a lot in other videos about um, second brain idea, about storing our ideas, where we store our ideas and are able to reference them easily. And it's really great for moving things from our working memory to long-term memory to be writing these down and to be thinking about it and returning to it and reviewing it. There is a video course they offer, um, the LA Binder Make and Take, and I'm taking that right now. It's a really in-depth video. It's four hours long, and I think it includes some follow-up um, Q&As. So I, if you're you know, kind of wondering well, what does this actually look like in practice, that's a great resource. Okay, so here is the what. You know, you're going to do the short vowel sounds. You're, where are you going to do this in your binder? In the phonics section. How are you going to do this? They have extra practice, and there are a lot of opportunities for celebration of a child's work, which I think is great because teaching reading and learning how to read is very hard. So we should celebrate that work. All right, let's jump into a later lesson here. Let's do unit 13. And just on the other side over here, we have some examples of um, talking about the word study with suffixes and 
the two jobs of S, and so this is something that you would work on with your student directly, and then through a shared writing activity, it would end up in your language arts binder for review. Unit 13, sound letter practice, lowercase t and capital T. Again, we have our new literacy concepts. We have our pacing for the week. You have the material list. You have why you're gonna teach it, what you teach. You have your notes for the educator and like this is what you're gonna say. So it's scripted out for you if you need it. If you don't need it, you can you know sum it up into your own words. It has indicators for which workbook pages you're going to need. We'll pull up this in just a minute. This is page 183, so we'll remember that. We have our multi-sensory activities. We have review. We have more workbook. Continuing with the workbook here. And ending with a party. They also start to bring in intentional copywork, and I really like how they lay out their copywork to be meaningful and a way to review and pull together the skills that the student has been word learning. And again, this is, you know, the LA binder. You're gonna be looking for this, you know, kind of graphic throughout to help you remember what to put into your binder. All right, so let's look at the student workbook for level one. We'll look at that same lesson. Okay, so again, you can print this off on your own. This one was printed and bound. So unit one, the short vowel sounds, they have this great chart. We're gonna go to 183 for that same lesson we were just looking at. So unit 13, here is the page for your lowercase t, forming the letter, say your letters as you're writing it. This is very much um, meant to be done you know, with the parent. This is not like an independent student workbook. Um, so you're practicing writing as you're saying it, and we know from research that writing things down and talking about it while we're writing it down helps move things into our long-term long -term memory. Blending sounds, I love that they have this right in here. Some other programs that I have worked with um, do not have all these foundational components laid out. If you had a student who was struggling with reading or um, had some phonological weaknesses, you would have to go to other resources to pull this in and they, and they have it right here for you. So we're doing sound blending with each of the vowels. We are blending the sounds again. We're talking about each sound and then we're blending them. Reading and copying, again, on the very basic phoneme level here. Reading and copying, finding the missing sounds, thinking about beginning sounds here with the, the sounds that have already been introduced. Now we're focusing on that middle vowel sound. Again, all of these are decodable based off of the sounds that the child has already learned. Doing some phoneme grapheme mapping here with this. And the capital T. We have our letter practice, and then we have our copy work. The copy work is great for this level. We're looking at each sound as a line. We are focusing on that initial, initial capital letter and the punctuation. Again, this is all very developmentally appropriate. Let's look at the materials for level one. Okay, so this is reading kit A for year one, level one. And so these are all of your materials that you will need for each of the lessons. I love that we have the nonsense words as well because we're really checking that we are understanding the way that the words and the sounds blend together. 
again, more real words. This is great for fluency practice that we have these pages, these fluency sheets. Not all children will need this, but children who are struggling readers really benefit from fluency practice. We have our nonsense words. Again, do we know the sounds that the phonemes say? Sentence strips, again, great practice for uh, fluency and just making this something that is attainable for the child. So, you know, cutting these up and having the individual little sentence strips instead of a large word page, a large page of text. We have our copy work here. This is reading kit B for year one. These are the readers that the child will be using. You can cut these up and staple them together to make the little books. These are very simple beginning reader books, focusing on the sounds that have been taught. They are decodable. They have the read, tell a story ones. Just everything that you need is here. Now, while everything that you need is here, this requires a lot more prep work than some of the boxed programs like All About Reading or Logic of English. This is something where, you know, if you're going to use pinwheels, I would recommend kind of having all of your materials ready and then spending, you know, a week at the in the summer or, you know, a week between you know, your terms or whatever, going through and prepping this stuff in advance so that you're not scrambling to have it, you know, prepped the day of or the night before. I th think the amount of material that they provide and the types of material they provide are much better <laughs> than some of the other programs. Now, not to say that the other programs are not good. Logic of English and All About Reading are fantastic programs. They move at a faster pace than Penwheels moves. So if you have a student that is really picking up reading instruction quickly and you know you need to you know kind of teach the generalization or the principle once and then move on, then great. Those programs will be a good fit for you. If you have a student that um, is maybe a bit more reluctant or is struggling with phonemic awareness or struggling with fluency or it just feels like you're needing more support, then Penwheels is absolutely the program for you. Other programs like Logic of English and All About Reading, if you have a student that is struggling with fluency and struggling with decoding and has signs of dyslexia, they do not go in depth enough to provide the amount of practice and repetition that those students need. Pinwheels does. That also means that Pinwheels is good for every all students, right? We know that the instructional materials and methods that we use for struggling readers benefit, you know, typical readers or, you know, more readers who are moving along faster. You just have to adapt the program to work for you. I am somebody who would rather have more materials than less materials so that I know what uh, what all is out there and I don't have to go and look here for this and there for that. With other programs, um, you don't have as many opportunities for phoneme graphing mapping. You don't have as many opportunities for um, different types of blending, continuous blending, blending and continuous blending. blending. You don't have the copy work pulled in. You don't have the grammar pulled in in a way that is fully integrated with the word study and the phonics aspects of it, this is just really well tied together and they have the videos to walk you through how to use it. Um, so they're really offering a complete package. Let's real quick look at level two. So we looked at year one, level one, year one, level two. All right. Level two. So again, pinwheels is broken up into two levels for the you know kindergarten year or the introductory introduction to reading. This is set up the same way that level one is set up. We have our table of contents. We have our extra resources. We have 
the breakdown of the different components. We have the teaching principles. We have our overview, the new concepts that are taught here. The scope and sequence for level two. We are continuing to work on short vowels, but adding in more consonants. We're adding in um, consonant teams or some diagraphs and then the QU. We're adding in blends and syllables and the two sounds equal one letter. So we're looking at you know diagraphs and vowel teams for that. Spelling is tied in here. Handwriting, our word study, we're thinking about compound words and bringing in the word history, the orthography. Again, developmentally appropriate grammar and mechanics. Looking at what a week of language arts looks at looks like. And I really like that they give this overview of this is what it's going to look like through the course of a week. Teaching to your learner's level, right here talking about that differentiation. We have our chart here, what you're going to need, what you will teach. Some phoneme graphing mapping is pulled right into the lessons, pulling in different literary components, um, onomatopoeia, and adding these into your language arts binder. Learning about the question marks, original writing, talking about using invented spelling videos on invented spelling. So again, this is just like everything you need. Labeling pictures, intentional copy work, the infographic for the, what's going in your language arts binder. to a later unit, capital, unit 26, um, H and W. The phonics rule, say your sounds as you write. The handwriting rule, say the letter name for letter practice. This is, this is research-based and based off of how our brain moves information from working memory to long-term memory and you know what we know about how the brain learns reading pulling in the movable tiles here. More word building, the word lists is right here. It are, they are all decodable words and words that are based off of the skills the child has already learned. They start to bring in caution words or heart words, as you might hear in other areas. And again, really talking about what parts of the words are words we can sound out and which ones are, you know, parts we just kind of have to remember, it's like the word have, you know, V, English words don't end in V, so we add the E to the end. Pulling in the copy work, intentional copy work, again, pre-teaching it. We're highlighting the capital letters and punctuation. We're underlining each sound in the word. We're drawing boxes around suffixes. We're drawing caution triangles around the caution words. So just really making us think about why we are doing this and how this ties to the skills we've learned. Original writing, finding a balance between inviting and correcting making lists, multi-sensory game ideas, and videos to go with it. Let's look at the student workbook pages. I think workbook pages in general get a bad rap. Um, I'm not saying we should be using a ton of workbook pages and worksheets and all of that. that. We know that when we are trying to learn material, when we're writing it down and having to produce it, it m helps move the information into our long-term memory. So we've got that vowel blending here. We have our wording for forming the letters. 
we have the page that we're decorating based off of the letter sound. We are sounding out words and then we're writing them. So we're moving through, you know, the hands-on aspect of moving the tiles to labeling it to writing it. Okay. Pinwheels also comes with these appendixes. These are your materials that you're going to be moving around. So they have your caution words. These are printed on cardstock, so you can cut them out and have them, you know, be a little bit sturdier. They have a flip book where you're flipping the different letters to make and build different words. They have letter tiles that you can print out and use. Personally, I have not had good luck with kind of paper-based letter tiles for moving around. And I have a list of alternatives to, you know, the vowels on IGTV that I will link. I think I can link that below um, for different, you know, tile kits that are out there. Um, we are kind of looking for a kit that has the vowels as one color and the consonants as another. And then I like that they have the suffix as another color. And then we have our diagraphs and other phonemes like the double S. All the caution words. The materials also come with these little invitations for celebrating success. You know, we just read this book or we just mastered this skill. And some of the other materials you'll need throughout the lessons. Okay, so that completes my walkthrough and kind of review of Penwheels. I think this is a great program. I wish that more homeschoolers knew about it. One of the reasons I think it's so great is that it is a complete program. They have all the things you need, even though you have to prep them, they have all the things and they have the videos and they have the workshops and they have the Q and A sessions that you can join. So you have the materials and you have a level of support that I don't see in other programs. And it's very, parent friendly. It is broken down into a way that there's not a lot of jargon or the jargon that is there is very detailed and explained. You know, all the terms we're using, why we're doing this, the methodology behind it, how we're talking to our kids about metacognition, all of that is there for you. So who is this program for? This program is for families who are looking to teach their child how to read and are feeling overwhelmed maybe, or want something very thorough, or families that suspect their child might have some reading difficulty because it has everything you need. You don't have to pull in a lot of additional materials. Who is this program not for? This program is not for a parent that needs everything open and go with no prep. The program is not for um, a child who already is reading. If you have a child that is learning things really quickly and happens to be one of those, you know, children in the 5% that just kind of learns to read on their own, this might be a little bit frustrating because you would have to adapt a lot of the material. You would have to be looking through and thinking, okay, what do we need and what don't we need so that you were moving at your child's pace. But overall, you know, I think this is a program that would work for most homeschool families and that has just so much to offer. I will be doing a review on the wand, the next program after pinwheels um, later on. So stay tuned for that. <laughs>